sort of get started right away into the action. So we can get through everything that we have uh, scheduled tonight. So first I want to just make a few announcements. We are filming, so if anybody's uncomfortable with that, you know, just so you know, it's um, Also, we are going <coughs> to pass around for the UAW. They are donating this space to us, so we're going to collect funds to help with the bill, the electric and all of that. So I'm going to start um, one of these boxes on this side and then on this side. We make sure they get all rest. If everybody would be Okay, now, um, here's the agenda. Mike is going to be doing some hand signals and rules. And then, um, then a group intro is going to be Melissa. Um, so, so, group intro, and then all the groups are going to come up and do their report back to talk about all the things that they've been working on this week. And then we have... It did. Sorry. It was scripted and mechanic. Okay. So before the group intro, um, Amy is going to actually go over the process. She's going to talk about, you know, how we're going to decide. Um, then it's going to be the group intro, then the group is going to do the report back, and then we are going to have, we have a couple of proposals scheduled for tonight from some of the groups, and those can happen after the report back. And then um, the proposals are going to be from action, legal, and possibly demands, time permitted. And then that's going to be it. That's we're going to have to close. So um, thank you for coming. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mike. Here you go. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm here uh, to talk about kind of the rules that we use when we're talking to one another and how to. Um, treat each other with respect, basically. Um, so we have some ground rules for how we do that. Um, so the first rule is we have to trust the process, and we have to trust each other. Um, so as long as we do those two things, as long as we trust each other, that everyone's here, you know, trying to do their best, then I think that uh, we can get a lot done. Um, the second rule is we should dissent, but not attack. Um, you can have a, an opinion that, that varies from someone else's, but it's not a good idea to you know come after them personally. That's that's not how we, we should operate. Um, the third rule is don't talk out of turn. So if it's your turn to talk, go ahead. But if it's someone else's turn to talk, make sure you allow them uh, that respect. Uh, the next rule is speak from experience. Um, you're not speaking uh, for anyone else, um, which kind of ties into speak for yourself. Um, we want to make sure that you know nobody's here is is you know trying to speak for multiple groups or anything like that. You know, you speak for yourself and you speak from experience. All right. So now I also want to go over the hand signals a little bit, um, which is going to be difficult with this mic. So I'm going to put that down and kind of just yell, I guess. <laughs> It doesn't fit. It's too big. So anyway, all right. So we've got some hand signals, um, and what that allows us to do is to communicate uh, various things to the group uh, without interrupting the speaker. So if you like something that's going on, put your hands up. Give some twinkles. All right. If you don't like what's going on, you can give the down twinkles. Don't like that. Um, if you're kind of neutral, kind of like, eh, you know, uh, just give something to this, you know? <laughs> All right. Um, if you can't hear someone, tell them to turn it off. All right. If uh, you have a, if, if someone is, 
I guess, speaking out of turn, or they are at the wrong place in the process, which Amy will talk about later, you give them the, the triangle. And you say, hey, we've got the point in process here, this person's talking out of turn, or what have you. Okay. Um, if someone is kind of going on and on, then you tell them to wrap it up respectfully. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah? Uh, next person up is Amy. <laughs> How about if you have a question? Um, there is, there is a, uh, there's a, well, there's a, there's a time for questions, and Amy will, will uh, help you with that. Hi everyone. Hi. 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 I, I want to just go over the process, um, and I'll make this back. One is the proposal. Proposal is set for the sample is I. It, the example is, um, I think we should march down Market Street at noon. Um, and then we go to clarifying questions. An example of that would be on the sidewalk or up the street. And uh, those questions are taken by staff. And the staff system works thusly. Two people will be taking staff from a list of names of people with questions. So if you have a question, raise your hand, you get one stat. Um, number three, concerns. Example, there's a lunch cart on the left side of the street, and we should be concerned about disrupting the business. Four, amendments uh, to the proposal. Amendments are proposed changes to the original proposal and must have a second from the floor to move forward. If there is a second from the floor, we will then take a round of questions, followed by a round of concerns for the amendment before we take a vote. Number five, the straw poll. Uh, we repeat the proposal, and the uh, straw poll is a vote by show of hands. Um, first, we will take an informal poll to test for clear consensus. Uh, if we have a clear consensus, we will move for an official informal or an official consensus test. If there is a clear consensus, the proposal and all past amendments pass. If there is not a clear consensus, we will break into small dis discussion groups, uh, hear more questions and concerns, and repeat the process. If after two repeats, there is still no clear consensus. We will we move to a two-thirds vote. In other words, two-thirds of those voting. Uh, <coughs> if they agree to it, then it passes. If they don't, uh, it does not pass. Uh, counters will count the votes, and they will, and they are unable to vote. Um, so if the again, if not passed by a two-thirds majority. The proposal does not pass. Everyone clear on that? Okay. Um, who's up next? Alyssa. Good evening. Is it on? It's not the one. It's not the one. It's a little blocky. How's that? Yeah. Um, just to go back to stack again, if you have a question, one of the people standing will be looking for you to wait for your hand, then they'll take your name. You don't start speaking at that point. At that point, they take a list of names, and then they tell you when you're next to speak, and then you get to talk. Uh, so that's what a stack means. We're going to have a report back period from the demands groups, uh, all groups actually. Uh, after our general assembly, we split up into groups to focus on issues that we believe are important. Each group is empowered by the general assembly to plan or discuss certain aspects of our role here, which is occupation. Uh, I'm going to be speaking for the demands group tonight. So to let you know what we were up to this week, we met 
and we discussed eight demands that were proposed by the Occupy Wall Street movement in New York City. Four of them we had consensus on and we will be proposing. Uh, time permitting, we'd like to propose two of them tonight, but we are going to take a back seat to the occupation planning tonight, so we might not get to them. Uh, two of those we're probably going to propose in a week or two, and some more of them require more research and discussion. So next, I'm going to call up the next committee, which is Security and Legal, and they're going to report what their activities have been. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm uh, one of the facilitators for the Legal and Security Committee. Um, we have, at this point, we have received uh, legal observer training uh, from uh, one of the, uh, the, I guess, the facilitators for uh, the legal observer training up in Philadelphia. Um, today, uh, one of our members was uh, taking a class up in, at the Occupied Philly in nonviolent de-escalation training, uh, which she will be uh, passing that on to the rest of us. Um, and uh, we are continuing our uh, contacts with the uh, ACLU and the National Lawyers. <laughs> um, and uh, should we come to a vote tonight on a place and a date for occupation, we will be forwarding that information on to our rep with the ACLU. <laughs> Uh, just to let you know a few things that we are seeking at this time, and please see myself or any other member of the Legal and Security Committee. Uh, we, well, number one, we are seeking legal representation for anyone involved in the occupation uh, for any possible criminal, uh, criminal charges against them. Um, and we are also seeking, uh, on loan, uh, video and audio recording equipment for our legal observers. And that's where we're at right now. Health and Human Services Report Act. Hello, I'm Michelle. Um, I'm going to tell you our announcements and such today. Um, in, I guess, the beginning of our announcements are we ask that everyone brings their own medication unless we have, like, a nurse permanently on staff, we won't even be able to give you any like Advil or Tylenol aspirin. We can't do that. There are uh, pretty much laws against it. Um, so please bring your own medication. And if you're bringing prescription medication, we're going to ask you that you bring it in its original prescription bottle with your name on it or to leave it at home. Um, let's see. We made a list of our food and supply uh, requests and donations. All the lists are in the back. You can pick one up. Uh, so we ask that everyone please bring stuff with them and bring donations to help everyone out. Um, we have storage facilities set up to hold things in place already. Um, if the city won't remove our trash, we ask people who aren't occupying but who are going to be coming back and forth um, to the occupation to take a bag of trash and a bag of recycling for your home trash. Don't dump it in someone else's trash can. Throw it out with your trash at home. Um, we are going to be coordinating with uh, legal and security for both a lost and found station and an information station. And once again, the handout of all of our needs are on that back table. There's tons of them to take a uh, sheet with you. And then we just have a couple suggestions to go over again. We urge you still to all get flu shots. We do not want to get sick and uh, the flu will spread really fast. Uh, to please bring uh, large resealable containers with jugs of water when you get here, when you come to occupation, that is. Um, we're still hoping that we can do a potluck on our first day of occupation, but we might push that back to our first full weekend. Um, be prepared with all of your own necessities upon occupation, and we would like to strongly suggest that we form a financial committee uh, many committees like ours have monetary needs, and uh, we need a group who can handle that. Um, and any nonprofit, uh, so any group who can handle that uh, nonprofit sort of money gathering, we could really use help with that because Health and Human Services is not going to be taking charge of any cash at all. 
That's pretty much it. Oh, yes, and we need volunteers who are nurses, EMTs, doctors, or uh, even people with CPR training, any medical training, we need volunteers. You can send me an email um, on either the main Facebook page or Amy an email or on the Health and Human Services page, which is now set up. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. Media and communication department. Hi, uh, I'm Leif, and I'm uh, here to report for the media and communications. Uh, just a couple things real quick. I know I don't have a lot of time. So um, this week what we did is we finessed the websites. So if you take a look at uh, Twitter, Facebook, and the OccupyDE.org, you'll see there has uh, been some improvements. Um, also, we have set up an internal email system for ourselves. If you want to know some more information about that, please contact us. Uh, also, this morning, uh, myself and David Garrett. Just that means. Hold your mic. Hold Can you hear it <laughs> Okay. Uh, myself and David Garrett were on WHYY. Uh, they have a program called FIRST. Uh, it's going to. Uh, Dana, am I wrong in saying 5.30 on Friday? Right. 5.30 on Friday, if you want to check that out. Um, they are very, very supportive of us, and they are interested in some more information. You will see uh, in the future, it probably it will not be Dana and I, but other members of the media and communications team will be reaching out to them, and you will see them on TV as well. Um, other than that, this is really important, so please lend me your ears. What we have done on the media and communications teams, we have set up liaisons that are going to work with the various committees. So Health and Human Services, everyone. We have volunteers in our group that want to reach out with you and get all the information, what you're doing, any press releases, things of that nature. So what we would like to suggest is when we break up tonight, if you uh, can have volunteers, you can appoint people, whatever. But if you can set that up so we can have a synergy between the, the media and communications group as well as your group. It's all about information and getting information out to the public. It is paramount of importance that we do this. So we want to work hand in glove with various communities to make sure that we can get this set up, we can get it set up properly. So I don't want to dictate what you're going to do when we break into groups, but if you could make that a priority, we already have the volunteers ready to go, so they are going to go and introduce themselves to your group. And if you could just say, take a vote, however, whatever the democratic process for your group is, please make that happen, let us know, and we can get the communication from your group to the public at large. Um, that's really all I have. If we don't make it to group tonight, let me contact you. If we don't make it to group, um, if each individual could set up uh, or elect volunteer an individual, um, correct me if I'm wrong, we're media at occupyde.org, correct? Media at occupyde.org. Mm -hmm. You can send an email to that. We will get we will get the names. We already have our volunteers, and we will uh, collate that problem. Pretty much any form that's on the website as well. If you can't remember, so the basically you can't find it. Yeah. 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 But uh, we're definitely <coughs> very anxious to get this rolling. So let's make that happen. Thank you. Actions report back, please. Could you repeat that that address again? Media at what? Media at occupyde.org. Media at occupyde.org. Testing, one, two, three. I hate microphones. Um, okay, so media, or er, sorry, actions got a lot done this week. We went on a tour of all of the parks in Wilmington and we looked at the ones that were viable and were not viable. Um, we are going to be doing several presentations today to revisit the topic of picking a location. Um, the explanation for that will come during the proposal. Uh, we also have a list of events going on. Um, these are not official proposals. These are just a list of events that will be happening. Anyone is welcome to join us. These are individual events. We can in no way, uh, shape, or form represent the entire movement by doing this. And now that it's anyone that shows up, this is strictly a personal, I volunteer, I would go do this uh, basis. So this Saturday, October 29th, is uh, National Occupy Your State Capital Day. Uh, I know a group of us are going to be going down to Dover and we'll be occupying uh, the green across from Legislative Hall in Dover, Delaware. Um, Sunday, we were looking at having a donations day. 
strictly, you know, going out, speaking to your church, speaking to local um, restaurants, organizations, anyone that you can think of that may have anything they want to donate, whether it's clothes, bandages, um, food, anything at all. Um, so just, you know, make it a point. If you feel comfortable with it, go out, talk to someone that you know, see if they have anything they may want to donate. Um, Monday is Halloween. We were thinking of doing a foreclosure graveyard. We will have <laughs> We will have little popsicle sticks stuck in the ground with a picture of a house on a piece of paper taped to it. And then you can come up and write the name, like write the address of a house that's been foreclosed on, or the name of the family who used to live in a house that was foreclosed. Um, and sort of you know, just dress in black and just make it sort of a, a funeral sack. And it's just going to be a little graveyard of foreclosed homes. Um, Where is that event? We were thinking about Rodney Square, if we can get away with it. We're going to see. <laughs> and every day at Rodney Square, we are putting a little bit more out on the grass to see how far we can go with this. So we are hoping to do some Rodney Square. If not, then we can sort of just walk around very slowly looking sad with a picture of a home at the end of the <laughs> So everybody looks very, very sad. Um, then Tuesday is All Souls Day, we're thinking of continuing the graveyard because that is, you know, generally considered, a, you know, the day of remembering the dead. Um, and then Wednesday, hopefully, we are hoping to occupy. Um, that is, we're going to have more information on that in the proposal. Um, so it's not just Tuesday, we have a, a window that we're looking to occupy within, but the beginning of that window is the second, and the reasoning for that will be also be um, explained in that proposal. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Uh, when is the uh, uh, That's Saturday. Oh, what time? Um, what time? <laughs> 12 to 3. 12 noon to 3 p.m. on the green across from Legislative Hall in Dover, Delaware. You can just look up our uh, Legislative Hall. It can't, can't be hard to miss. Um, sorry. Yes. Do you have a proposal for application? We're going to get to that later. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's coming up. That's coming okay. up. Arts and Culture Reform Act, please. Hi, I'm Dossie from Arts and Culture, and we, and we have a few things to touch back with. We've been in contact with local homeless organizations, which are very happy to have us um, Occupying and they, uh, Bill uh, Perkins from Friendship House in particular is uh, getting the word out to the homeless population so they'll be joining us in the near future. Um, we also have been in contact with Sojourner's Place and are waiting for a return call from them so some of the local organizations have been met with, have been spoken to. Also have been in touch with some of the faith based organizations. Um, Rabbi Klein from Bethel is very excited to be participating and, and is going to lend his congregation. Uh, know what's going on with that, and hopefully they're going to be joining us too. He's bringing it up at the next rabbinical meeting, so he's going to let all the uh, rabbis in the area know so that they can make their congregations aware. Uh, I know that we have a retired minister and his wife with us tonight, and hopefully they are going to join us. I'm not calling you out, but you're coming, and we're glad that you're here. Thank you. Uh, supplies, we are doing pretty well supplies. We've got a few things, but we still need tons and tons of stuff. You can find a, on our notes, um, on our Yahoo group, you can see some of the things that we need. We finally have a Yahoo group. You can see that on the Facebook page. Or if you want to connect with me after when we break into our groups, I can give you our, our website so that you can find us. And lastly, the library, which brought up a few concerns last week. What do we want in our library? That was the big question. Um, I went to Occupy Philadelphia and spoke with them and how they're organizing their library, which they are very proud of. And they have turned nothing away as far as books. We were discussing, you know, we want to uh, choose which books we want to use and which books we don't. We will pay anything because when you're occupying, you're going to need something to read. And you can have a book exchange. So you can have two event tents. One would be the um, book exchange where all books will go that are donated, even if they aren't exactly what you're looking for. And the other event tent will be actually our, our library. It'll be a lending library, but we're going to try and be more selective as far as what's in that, having shelves that are labeled as far as uh, what topics, such as politics, history, diversity, socialism, what, you know, some of the main topics that seem to be of interest for the occupation. So we have, we're going to be talking more about the library tonight. And the other thing about the library was they are doing um, speakers opportunities. If you have a topic that you're knowledgeable about, 
hopefully passionate about as well and want to do a, a, a speaker series, people can sign up for that or you can sign up to present one. So we're going to also again discuss that tonight. Thank you. Thank you. If the recruitment committee is here tonight and you have one person who'd like to come and report back, you can do that for one minute. Is there anyone in the recruitment here tonight? Okay. Uh, there's a need for a finance committee. If you would like to start a finance committee, we encourage you to do so. If we have an opportunity to break into groups tonight, you can hold up a piece of paper that says finance and people will gather around you. If we don't have that opportunity, uh, YouTube, excuse me, the uh, Facebook group is a good place to start filling people out to see if they want to join the group. Uh, we're also going to be starting a technical committee for electric and networking needs. And if you are interested in joining that committee, Josh, right here, uh, would like to talk to you. Uh, we're done with the report facts. So if we have an opportunity after proposals tonight, we will break into committees. Uh, if you haven't joined a committee yet, you're welcome to do so. There are no rules or everyone can join wherever they want. And now we're going to have proposals from the Actions Committee. If you are starting a committee, which anyone can start at any time, any interest, by all means, start one. Just be sure to check in with one person, the facilitation team, so we can, uh, we can just be aware of your committee, so we include you in the process. Can facilitators raise their hands? Find somebody who's raising their hand. These are facilitators. If you'd like to start a committee, just grab one of us and let us know you're starting a committee. That's all you got to do. Thank you. Actions. Everybody, I'm Ryan. Uh, Hi. So, Kind of hard to do, I'm trying to read on this and talk at the same time. Okay, there was a little bit of confusion um, the last time we talked about the, the location of the occupation. I don't think everybody knew um, what they were voting on. And also, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are here that weren't here that day, and also a lot of people that were here that day that aren't here now. So, um, like Josh said, we went out and visited a bunch of parks in Wilmington to kind of try to get an idea of like, you know, what we had to, to pick from, what our options were. And um, we're going to go ahead um, one by one and uh, explain some of what we what we found about these, just some factual things about these locations. And then, um, and then we'll go from there. So who's... Um. Rodney Square will be included in the proposals for anyone who still feels strongly about occupying that particular location. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Welcome, everybody. My name is Kevin, and I'm going to present Rodney Square. I'm really, really excited tonight in doing this because this is really an historic event. And these are historic times that we are really part of a really great movement. Now, with the occupation, we looked at various parts, and we looked at Rodney Square, where a few weeks ago we held a rally. For those people who aren't aware of Rodney Square, it is a great location downtown, highly visible, surrounded by all of the major banks, Hotel DuPont, so it is a very, very visible place. Now the area that would be occupied, the green area, is not very large. It's nice and flat, but it is in a very large area. Now there is electricity there to use to set up various microphones or so on. But it's a little bit difficult getting equipment and supplies in because of the way the setup is. There's walls that are surrounding it. Now, with regards to transportation, it's a transportation hub. If you're familiar with it, there's buses coming and going on all of the sides. So if you want to travel there by bus, it's a wonderful place. Now, with regards to cars, that's going to be difficult. The entire area is metered during the week. And it's at two hour increments. It's a quarter for every 15 minutes. So if you were staying there during the week, it would be a problem for parking. There are parking garages, I'm sure, because of the many offices, I'm sure, the cost to park your car. So that would be a difficulty. Now, 
There are a lot of events that go on in Rodney Square. Uh, I was there today with Josh and a couple of other people. They had food vendors. Uh, the day we had the rally, they had a small weightlifting thing. So there are a lot of events. It's highly popular. It's very, very visible. Now that might lead to a problem getting a long time permit for the area there because of the nature of that. So we have to keep that in mind uh, with regards to uh, the permits. There's a whole section on fees and equipment and regulations that I think will be enforced by the city of Wilmington. So Rodney Square is something that's popular, but those are some of the things that we observed there. Thank you. All right, questions? Okay, any factual information from the crowd? Yes? Pretty much, even though it's two-hour parking, you still have to move the car every two hours. You can't just put one more in the meter. You have to drive around and park the car. Again, and there are meter people all over the place. Uh, stacks. We're gonna run a stack. So Andrew's back there. So give them their name. Your name. Question. Yeah. Uh, I was already kind of told by my connection that I have with the mayor's office that they will not give us a permit to occupy a lot of Thank you. That's all they have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And they will fight to their staff. Andrew? No, don't call them out. We've got Alice over here now. Question? going to occupy and stay over many days. I don't know whether this is making any difference. But for people who are going to drive in for the day, there's free parking at Trolley Stadium and, there, and there's a free shuttle uh, parking ride to downtown. Thank you. Uh, Steve, had a, yeah, I was there's also uh, some, a lot of places around the area that have free parking that you can find. Uh, mostly around H Street, uh, there's lots of free parking over there. Okay, Andrew? Andrew's on stack. What, what is the law concerning staying in that park overnight? <coughs> Does anybody know? I do. See, to, to clarify, uh, any park, we're not supposed to stay overnight. That, that's, that's a city ordinance. No, there's nothing. You can't sit in a park. It's not. Yeah. I read that online. Yeah, they're wrong. No. Are they wrong? Yeah. So you can sit and they said drive it to where overnight. It's okay. We, your legal and security committee is going to clarify all these questions for you once that? we decide. Right. Just put down facts. 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 Factual information. Who do you got? I've got nobody right now. Okay, I've got Dana next. Uh, it was stated in the newspaper that uh, the city will not allow uh, occupy. Delaware to occupy Rodney Square. So if people are, are going to occupy Rodney Square, uh, they should be prepared to probably be prepared to be arrested. Okay. Thank you. If just to let everybody know this is factual on Tatnell Street, which goes south in Wilmington, fifth and sixth cross Tatnell, there is free parking there. Fifth and sixth as they cross Tatnell. Thank you. Susan. Um, I live in Wilmington. I don't really have too much free parking. If you go into the neighborhood, in order to park, you have to have a residential sticker on the front. And, and there are signs uh, <laughs> stating where the where the permit parking is, right? Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Right. We can clarify that to the committee. Maybe. Lauren? Yes. <laughs> This kind of goes with the residential parking. I know um, in some places in the city where there's residential parking, for a few cars, you can, uh, there's a do not ticket line that you can call with the make and tag number of the car. So if there's enough people that live in the city, close to 
sure on each square, but you know, if you park a person on it, accommodate some people. Very good. I would suggest as a city resident that you either come in on the bus or that you go to a parking ride outside the city and park and bring the bus in and take the bus in. Okay. But I would suggest it costs $40 to get a ticket. Oh, I'm leaving this crazy bus. <laughs> All right, we have one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Any other factual information? Yeah. Um, I live in the city. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is standard. Um, the signs that even when you're not meter parking, the signs that say two hour parking, they also would like you to move your cars unless you have a sticker. And your stickers don't allow you to park everywhere. So you have to get a sticker, and they'll give you sort of like a grid around where you want to park, where your parking sticker is valid. Um, outside of that, as she was talking about, on the Delaware website, um, when they're talking about parking, you can register your visitors for not, not to be ticketed through the Delaware State website. Okay, last All person. right, stack. Last person on stack, is Barbara. Yeah. I think what I had to say was confirmed um, $40 and there is no free parking. I paid my tickets. I live in Wilmington. <laughs> and I cannot park in front of the house without have a residential sticker because of another reason. I know parking and no free lunch. No, <laughs> no signs. Clarifying questions. Five minutes. Does anybody have a clarifying question? We can stand Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have a enumerated or idea of who the contingent of occupiers is going to be? How many there are? We're going to say. We're going to. We're going to um, take a straw poll of that after uh, we present at each location. So we're going to get a feel for who's actually willing to occupy each spot. But there's not one in general. Okay, yeah. Not as well. So we're going to present each one. And then we'll we'll ask for each site individually who's actually. But it hasn't been asked before. Like the question hasn't right. been no, asked. No, no. Okay. Question? Uh, Josh? Yeah. Uh, there's a problem last time there was a uh, kind of a bathroom. The library is on with the books and we're grasping there. And I don't know if it's not even the library or not. And also, yeah, you have to have a library card and ID. Well, which isn't hard to get. I just said, well, the library up there is right. Library's free. I think 